Let's get into the message for this morning uh, because I'm chomping at the bit. I believe that the insight that the Spirit of God will give us today will be such that will help us have that kind of confidence to be able to go forward in good order and, and actually experience and see many, many, many manifestations of the Word of God. So let's take this short prayer. Father, we lift our voice to you in the name of Jesus, saying that we thank you for today. We thank you for this another opportunity that you've given us to gather ourselves together here in the name of Jesus, believing and expecting that as we are here to spend this time in praise, worship, and the ministry of your word, that the eyes of our understanding are enlightened, that we'll be able to know the hope of our calling, which is in you in Christ Jesus, and to be able to even more fully embrace your inheritance, which is in you in Christ Jesus. Thank you for this time that you give us together. And we believe that your truth ha, will stand up on the inside of our spirit and cause our heart, minds and emotions to come in line and to be able to go forward and let you guide our footsteps in the path of righteousness for your name's sake and do all that we can to see to it that our footsteps conform to the plan, purpose, destiny that you have arranged for our lives. We thank you for this. We release our faith in this prayer. We've prayed it according to your word. and Therefore, we will act like it's so, walk like it's so, talk like it's so, believe it to be so. And we give you thanks and praise in the matchless, miracle-working, mighty, and majestic name of the Lord Jesus of Nazareth. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Okay, today's lesson is entitled, The E-Word, My God Shall and Did. Hmm? That's the title. Yes. My God Shall and Did. Now, how did this come about? Well, this particular concept rolled up on the inside of my heart and spirit, likely a lot in connection with the conference that we were just in at Straight Cake Church there. Uh, because a lot of the speakers kept putting emphasis on the fact that the things that God has already done for us are yet even now available to us. Therefore, there must be some things. There are some things that we need to put into place to have those things that he's done show up, as it were, in our lives. And so. The other morning when I woke up, I heard this scripture, my God shall. And I heard it with that emphasis on shall supply. And then my brain got connected and I'm saying, well, now wait a minute. If the scripture reads that my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory, that sounds like he's going to do it. But then we read in other places where it tells us that God has, Amen. hath blessed us with every spiritual blessing yes. in heavenly places. Yes. So I started this little, this little roll thing in my heart and spirit in terms of, well, if he shall, but it said he did, so which is it? No, this is me rolling around. And, and, and of course, in, in the course of, of, of day and time, you know, I, I, that, that, that thought process got away from me. And, uh, and a couple of times I got a little nervous. OK, God, you got to bring this back to me because you brought it to me to bring on Sunday. And I couldn't recall it. Blah, blah, blah. And this and that. So uh, it, 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 it did get back uh, uh, yesterday or day before. And I was like, whew, thank you. <laughs> Because I always want to be sure to say to you, come on now, Amen. what God tells me to say. Because he sends you here. He causes you to watch this video. And I want to be sure to get to you what it is the Spirit of God has said. So now, 
Today, I'm going to need for you to hook your heart and spirit up to Holy Spirit and have a sense of expectation that we will hear and understand something today that's going to cause our lives to be magnificently blessed. I don't mean just, okay, I woke up this morning and, and oh yeah, I found this and got, no, 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 no. Time for magnificent blessing <laughs> is upon us. Okay, I got one yes, a few head nods. Let's try it one more time. The time for magnificent blessing. Hallelujah is upon us here at Salvation Temple Church and those watching, those connected, those listening in Jesus' name. Now let's go look at introduction here uh, because we have to settle this issue about, well, was it shall? Because that's where a lot of people function. They're waiting on God to bless. Huh? A lot of people expect, well, someday God's going to heal me. Someday God's going to make a way. Someday down the road, if I keep doing this, then I'll get that. I, I, shall feels like it's going to be. Hmm? Well, but, 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 but how do we deal with those things that it said that he hath already or has? Or, you know, I was looking up in Webster. I'll tell you in, in a minute. Looking up in Webster, they don't have it. Uh, uh, well, an online edition that I have on my computer. I couldn't find the definition for the word hath, H-A-T-H. So I had to get to have and so forth and so on. And I'll show you that down in here. But, but if he shall, what is it that, what, how do we handle this business about what he already did? See, and, and, and I pray that God will help us settle that today. I pray that he'll challenge us to recognize what he has done and then put us in a position to activate, to, 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 to get hold of what it is he has already done. And listen, if we, if we receive what he has done, not going to be too much room <laughs> for anything else. All right. So then, so then, so then, so then. And then last week started this journey here about dealing with some of the basics involved in, in getting back to basic basics involved in things of faith. So so my introduction statement here is uh, faith basics, the, the basic things of faith. They never get old. Never get old. You, you, you shouldn't you shouldn't take a vacation from faith. You shouldn't decide, well, I don't have to. I can just say whatever I want to say. God understand. I can just do whatever I want. God understand. No, 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 no. Faith is not a season. Faith is not a fad. Faith is not just something you do when you're in deep trouble. Faith is a way of life. Faith is the truth. And, and, and no matter what is going on with you, it's connected to the basic principles of faith. Now, just because you didn't feel well that day or just because you got upset, that, that, that doesn't change the law of faith. Hmm? So then let's, let's look at here some more. So here's some more. Here's some more faith basics that are going to help us today as we go forward. Let's start out with this uh, main text message. Philippians chapter 4, verse number 19. Philippians chapter 4. Verse number 19, and, and, and kind of like last week, I'm pressing you to believe that God's word is true. And if it is true, then that means we need to do what it say. Come on. And we need to say what it said. Yes. Amen. Heard a lot of that even in the, the conference that we were in from all of the different great speakers that were there. They were saying the same kind of thing. I mean, Dr. Bill Winston uh, just ran over some just some some basic thing about forgiveness, basic thing about love. And, and when we carry that attitude that that and, and oh, here was a biggie he worked on about forgiveness. Yes. You, you mean I mean, uh, his, they have billions of people in the church, billions of dollars. He flies all around over the place and, and he coming and telling us you got to work on being in a position to forgive yes. so that your faith will work. And your faith works by love. And you can't afford to get out of love. Oh, see, see, y'all still cut. Are you waiting on something? I'm here. Huh? You can't afford to get out of love for no reason. 
because the love causes, not having love causes your faith not to work. Yes, sir. So I'm going to try this. I'm just having you throw up your hands. Oh, I love everybody. Come on, just come on. Say, I love. Come on, come on. Say that. And they say, I walk in love. Come on now. I walk in, I walk in love. Yeah, amen. Amen. And you know, we, we chuckle a little bit, but that's a powerful reality that we need to pay attention to. So then let's go along. Uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse number 19. But my God shall, do you hear that? Shall supply, how much? All. all how, whoa, whoa, how, how much? All. all your need according to his riches where? Amen. By Christ Jesus. My God shall supply all your need. Seems like to me, if there's some things missing that God isn't supplying all, then we need to check into that wow. and see what's up. Mm -hmm. Sup with that. <laughs> huh? If you don't have all your need, because God not lying, y'all. Yeah. Hmm? Then with this, this, this uh, issue between shall and did, then this other main scripture text is in Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath. Now, when you hear that, who hath, what do you think about? Has, yeah? You think about past tense means something like that's already been done, yes? Uh -huh. Well, uh, who hath blessed us with all, here's that word all again, spiritual blessings where? In heavenly place. Say it one more time. Where? In heavenly, In heavenly place. All of your, our spiritual blessings are in heavenly places. Where in heavenly places? In Christ. And then, then I, I, I usually don't include these little extra writing things up under there. But this time I did. Places, heavenly places or things has blessed us with, uh, has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places or in heavenly things. Well, what, what, do we, what do we consider? What do we think about is in heavenly places? Hmm? There's no dying there. There's, there's no tears. huh? There's a tree up there that the, the leaves of the tree are good for the healing of the nation. Jesus is there. God is there. You know, some of our relative peoples are there. Hmm? Well, he's blessed us. Half past tense. Blessed us. So the deal becomes kind of like, which is it? Is it shall or is it, and I'm supposed to reach back like it passed it, or is it hath? And, and the real bottom line is that if he hath, then we're missing if we're sitting around waiting on the shall. Hmm? With this concept that I got to do something in order to have what God has already Given me. And as long as we feel like there's something we have to do, that means we don't have it yet. And at the very point of us having this position that we don't have it yet contradicts is the opposite of the place God wants us to be in. Hmm. OK, well, I'll try, try to say it like this, make it even plainer. If you don't think you got it, you don't have it. <laughs> and if you don't think you have it, that means you're calling God a lie. Huh? All right. Well, OK, let's see if we can work this some more. So I took this time. Make sure we get this definition so we can all be on the same place with this. So Webster's Dictionary, 1828 edition, looked up this word shall. Now, there's a whole lot of things in there. So I wish you would take some time to go there and look at additional things. But here's here's a piece of how I put it together. I took some stuff out and blah, 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 blah. But I want you to see a business about this word shall, because, again, I was pushing because I used to hear. People say stuff like shall is one of the strongest words in the English language. Shall is kind of like ain't no maybe. <laughs> shall is kind of like ain't no doubt about it. <laughs> shall is kind of like it's going to be just because it's going to be and that's all it is to it and ain't nothing you can do about it. Mm 
Huh? Amen. Amen. That's what I used to hear around and that sort of thing. So looking in here, Webster's Dictionary 1828, uh, the first definition place is this point about shall is primarily in the present and in our mother tongue was followed by a verb in the infinitive. Now, uh, I looked up that word infinitive and then I can't find it what I put in. So somebody look it up for me real quick. It boils down to meaning that that's just the way it is. There's no end to it. It's out there and that's all it is to it. OK, now then we pushed on to this other definition point here. Shall means to possess. Huh? It means to hold in possession or power. Hmm? Now, see, again, if you don't think you have it, you can't hold it. And if you're thinking shall is somewhere off somewhere, then that means you don't have it, which means you can't possess it. And all of that kind of positioning keeps us poor. <laughs> Keeps us worried, keeps us dealing with fear, Amen. keeps us pressing envy, <laughs> keeps us fighting to forgive because we think we don't have. Huh? And, and, not, and, then, and then that's the last time I'm going to say this because it sounds real strong. And then it boils down to we calling God a lie. And, and the reason, the way we measure calling God a lie or not is whether we can touch it. If we can't touch it, then that means he, 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 we don't have it. He said we have it or he said he's gone and it's not here yet. We, we, we're not touching it. We're not feeling it. We're not tasting it. We're not hearing it. We're not seeing it. Huh? And that kind of condition in our thought process comes out of the anchor of what's in our heart. And it comes from, uh, the, 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 sometimes the preachers say, it comes from the deep recessions of our minds. And, and then those people who say things like, we have the power to determine what's going on with us by the words of our mouth. Yes. And at the seat of our will, which is stronger than God. Oh, did y'all see that tweet I put out that uh, Dr. Bill Wilson thought what I said was so great, he said it again. No, he, he, I don't know if he read it. He, 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 but he just said it because it's true. Human will is stronger than God himself. Your human will is stronger than God. So if you have decided that it's not there, then ain't nothing God can do about that. So then, okay. When we get into this thinking process, we get into this feeling process, we get into this sense world area, all of the promises of God become of no effect in us, concerning us. Today, I believe God will cause a breakthrough to come to pass in your thinking process. Where you will decide that what God said is true. And yes, I have it. No matter what it looks like. No matter what it feels like. No matter what anybody else says. It is mine now. Amen. And from that kind of position. Hallelujah. Heaven will start to move things into place. So that the will of God can come to pass. In your life. All right, so let's go here. So, so shall, my God shall cause you to possess. He will equip you to hold in possession. He will give you the power to manage all your need. He has it. He's provided it. All right, then. So, all right, so let's do some, let's do some support, uh, support text scriptures here. Uh, and I'll have like two highlight points today. So, uh, of course, Kyle not here. So cause he's a, oh, you didn't have all those highlight points. And you didn't have all <laughs> Because there's, there's two elements I'm working on in this entire message here. 
One of them is for us to get settled about appreciating shall. And then for us to get a boldness to move on to the place of half. And have a sense in our consciousness that half means now. And therefore we say, OK. And then we talk like it's so. Yes. Act like it's so. Live like it's so. Believe it to be so. Amen. And have an opportunity to show up for us. So let's work on this shell part. The shell part. Psalm number 23. Stanza number one. So maybe I'm working on this business about is God lying to us or not. <laughs> I'm, I'm working on this business about there, there is a there is a place uh, that people get in their thinking process. And, and uh, again, I said that we push shall off into somewhere else. Huh? And, and, and it's out there. Uh, we'll get to it. But but listen, listen, even in Psalm number 23, stanza number one, the Lord is. What kind of tense is that? Present. <laughs> My shepherd. Uh -huh. And I like to say it like this. And because he is, then read the rest of the verse. I shall not want. Now we got to work in our head to get this done. We got to work in our heart to get this done. If he is our shepherd, that, that, that should cut out this begging business. Oh, God, please. And it should get, it should quit this bargaining. Business. God, if you do this, I promise you, I will. Because is, is, y'all. Is, is, is. And when we approach him based on is, then he can relate. Huh? And, 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 and one, of, one of the greatest things that we can ever do is say, God, you said I shall not want. Therefore, I shall not want. I am not in want. Whew, boy, that challenges our head. Huh? I'm not in want. Have you checked your bank account lately? Understand what I'm saying? Have you packed your pocket? Go, how about I, I shall not want? I'm not in want. What you mean, not in want? Don't you see by blah, so forth and so forth? And listen, soon as we get into those categories, we start denying the truth of God. And of course, he don't want to show up and bless our mess. Because if he bless our mess, then we think mess okay. Huh? And he'll keep working with it. And we'll be sad. Oh, you see, I told you. If I would beg him hard enough, he would see my tears. And he'd go he answered because I yelled and rolled across the floor. I got a breakthrough in the carpet. <laughs> no, you just rolled around the floor and ruffled up some clothes. That's what you just did. Huh? So now listen. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Therefore, if there's any want around, that's going to make us feel like he not the shepherd. And what he told us is not true. All right. Well, let's catch another verse. Uh, Second Corinthians. Chapter nine, verse number eight. And God is able whew, to make all grace. Now watch this. Look at it. Make, make all grace abound towards you. Like, like a big Mack truck. Sometimes you look up in your rearview mirror and here come this, woo, 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 this big truck barreling down the highway. And you checking your speed. You checking the distance between you and that truck. And you're kind of like, whoa, ho, ho. Hmm? I used to say in the olden days, I used to say, love you, Jesus. Smack me down with a Mack truck of your blessings. <laughs> come on, just roll over me. Which is blessed like a Mack truck. Huh? Well, well, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 8. This is in the Bible. Is it in your Bible? Is it in your Bible? Cool? You see, read? Huh? So it's not something I can make up. All right, all right. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. And God is able 
to make all grace abound toward you that ye what always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God is able. Yes, he is. Now, I'm, I'm going to ask you to say it in this moment. And I want you to gather up in your thinking process all of whatever you up against and all whatever you're facing. And when you say it this time, I want you to have an attitude that there's victory when you say it. And whatever you're up against will change because of what you say. Hmm? Amen. Say all grace, all grace is abounding toward me. Is abounding toward me. Now. You ever seen a bowling ball roll down an alley and knock down all the pins? At this? Yeah, that's what just happened. Okay, I got one. Thank you, Lord. Got a couple head nods, and I'm still waiting. All grace is abounding toward me. Say it again. Say it again. Say it. Say it. Completely, completely, all bowling. Because, oh, 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 we could take some time up in here and I could get you to come up here and you'd run me a list of issues you face as long as your arm. Hmm? If I can just get you to accept the fact that when you said what you just said, all of those issues fell down, fell down out of the way. Oh, I'll give you another one. Ephesians <laughs> chapter one, verse number seven. Well, I guess, uh, no, no, this part right here, this part, Ephesians chapter one, verse seven. This is the part right here where, where I need to challenge that thinking in your head that, that, that you don't have something because you sinned. Or the trouble you had was because of something you did. And, 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 uh, and, and the other part of that, you know, sometimes because some people feel like they don't deserve what God, you know, they don't deserve a better house. They don't deserve better. Huh? But the other part of that is if you got any little old stanky little thing still stuck on the inside of you where you're struggling to forgive somebody else, I'm telling you, it ain't worth it. Let it go. And I think just before I read this verse, I'm going to give you another opportunity one more time to say this out loud. Father, forgive them for they, not, they do not know what they did. Now, I'm not talking about thorns. I'm not talking about hanging on the tree. I'm not talking about being beat all night long. I'm talking about whatever they done did. Let it go. Let's do this one more time and then I'll read the verse. Father, say for Father. Father. Forgive them. Forgive them. They, don't know what they, they don't know what they did. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7. In whom we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. God forgave you through the blood of Jesus because of the riches of his grace. So surely it's no big thing to cut them loose. Let them go. Forgive. Now, I don't have time, and I didn't put it up there about this, 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 this scripture over there. I believe it's in the gospel according to Mark. It's the Mark of Matthew. They say that, that uh, when you stand praying, you know, bring your arms up, 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 and God will do this and God will do that. But he said, when you stand praying, do what? He said, you know it. He said, forgive. Because if you don't forgive, your father, which is in heaven, cannot forgive you. So how long we need to be talking about this forgiveness business? See? 
Forgive. I don't care who it was. I don't care how long. And sad if it's from long time ago. I mean, if, if it's really from long time ago. Hmm? Forgive. I'll read the verse one more time. Ephesians chapter one, verse seven. Give you groundwork. <laughs> Give you ground, ground uh, foundation so that you can just say, ah, forgive them and move on. Ephesians chapter one, verse seven, in whom we have redemption. Through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. So if there's anything uh, hanging around in your head that that God is not doing something for you because of something you did, push it out. Push it out. God not holding stuff back. Watch this. God not holding stuff back from you because of what he's already forgiven you. <laughs> he's not holding back. You, you holding on to something you thought he and he done for, he forgave you. <laughs> and then, and then, and then, and then you think he's holding things back. He's already forgiven you. Yes. Oh, I need an arm to shoot up. Say, I am forgiven, I am forgiven. By, the by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and technically that means you're standing in his righteousness. I'll give, I'll give you one more. Give you one more. Ephesians chapter three. Let's go. Ephesians chapter three. I've been working this week, uh, you know, working in my brain about uh, how can we get people to just do what God's word said? How can we just have people say, OK, this is it. And then talk like it's so and act like it's so live like it's so and believe it to be so. And, 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 and I got a little settle, a little settle settlement in my spirit. And, and by the Holy Spirit say, well, you have to just keep on telling because everybody don't get it the first time. And everybody don't get it the same way every time. And some people just have to keep telling because that one time they get it. Whew. Great joy. Ephesians chapter three, verse number 16. That he would grant you <laughs> according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. I got a question to ask you. How rich is God? And, and, and let's push it even further. Let's, let's push it to a little Detroit, little Detroit style. Is he rich enough? You know, do you think God got enough blessing to just break you off a little something, something? You know, when, when things are tough. You know, we, you know we, got, we, got, we got in the natural, there's big financial issues going on in Detroit. And all, you know, go, in, the, in the U.S. government, a trillion billion dollars in debt. Boy, if everybody called in them notes at all the same. <laughs> That'd be a mess. Well, do you think God is rich enough to handle that? Say out loud, yes. Yeah. I handle that, what, the, the, the United States debt. To handle the Detroit debt. And then all of a sudden, your little debt. <laughs> Say he's rich. Come on, he's rich. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And look at what he's done, Ephesians chapter 3, verse number 16. Verse number 16, that he would grant you, say out loud, me, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Now, him, God, making your inner man strong the, by, by uh, according uh, uh, the, to be strengthened with might by his spirit, by his spirit in the inner man. Here's this other insight that clicked in my thought process and in my spirit. Uh, uh, us having uh, our spirit man to be strong and then do what God say and say what he say and believe that he is and, 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 to, and to access those things. That he meant. You can't do it in your own power. You can't do it. You can't do it with your intelligence. You can't do it with who you know. But your spirit man on the inside being strong by God will embrace God's truth for you. Oh, and have you say what he said. All right. Now, so here, here's the second highlight point. Second, last highlight point. Let's deal with the half part. Now, um, let's see. 
Uh, let's go back, please. I need to go back. I need to go all the way back to the definition, Webster's Day Dictionary, the, the def definition of have, the definition of have. So we're going to have it up here. Because uh, uh, I couldn't find half. Back to I was talking about half. I couldn't find it. The closest thing I could get, because we, we in, our, in our regular thinking, as soon as we say half, we, we, we consider that that means past tense. I mean, you know, half. So then the closest thing I could get was the word have, H-A-V-E, have. Okay, and so I kept a little stuff, took some things out, and, and came up with this presentation for you. What is this? pre tense. And participle passive. Now, Jackie, you're going to have to help me or, or Jewel or one of you all teacher types uh, to pre tense and, and participle passive. Bottom line, had. <laughs> God had. Yeah? Okay, so past tense. Not going to be, already did. Huh? Say out loud, not going to be. Say God already did. Bless me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. then, and then reading on, reading on here, uh, uh, had present. See, you following? Present. And, and this is how they express it. I have, thou hast, he has, we have, ye have, they have, have, have. <laughs> Derek, have a tie. And I'd like to possess it. <laughs> I can't possess it unless he has it. <laughs> and since he has it, I'm believing God to move on his heart. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I'll take it off right now. <laughs> well, listen, because I see what he has and I know that he possesses it. That's when I can make a demand on it. What I need for us to get to the place that we see that God has everything that we need to be and do all that he's called us to be and do. And therefore, since we know that he has it, then we can make a demand to possess it. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, yes, sir. Uh, I need us to flip on forward, and that hath is that do to possess, to hold in possession or power. Then we move on forward down here to this Ephesians, because I get this hath part. We're going over to the hath part. Get down here to Ephesians chapter 6, because remember the struggle? Well, if shall, then, 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 then what about the hath? And, and if we hath it, why do we have to shall it? Huh? And, and we're going to settle today. That if he hath, then we hath. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Ephesians chapter 6. Uh, and this is not sounding like gobbledygook, is it? Are you, are you, you with me? You, you got that? Okay, all right. all right. Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 12. Yes, sir. Now, here, here, this, this verse is going to help us deal with. Now, Dr. Winston said, Dr. Winston said in one, one of the messages, he said something to the effect of that. Uh, uh, there, the, the things are there, what, whatever, whatever is above in the heavenly realm, we need it here in the earthly realm. And sometimes to get it from the heaven, to the, there is a fight involved. There are some things that we have to deal with. We have to make our mouth shut up at certain times. Come on. <laughs> then there's other times when we have to open our mouth and just say straight up what God said. And don't be moved by what we see. Don't be turned around by how we feel. We just have to say what God say. OK, so there's a fight because the enemy. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, there is an enemy. The enemy is doing everything that the enemy can do to get you out of love. What you mean? What does love have to do with what God has done? Everything. I wish I could talk to Tina. If I could just get her on the elevator like I did. Who's it I saw on the elevator? Lean, oh. she, she's kind of like, a Horn. <laughs> I stepped on the elevator with Lena Horn in New Orleans all these decades ago, and I was just thoroughly captivated. I mean, she was beauty personified. 
I mean, her skin was clear. And, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, 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 I get it. Okay. <laughs> but I just want to tell Tina, this what love got to do with it. Airy stank. <laughs> huh? The enemy wants to get you out of love. Why? Because faith works by love. Any area that he can attack you and pull you from love, he wins by causing faith not to work. Hmm? All right. Look here. Look here. So and here and here, here. Here's a perspective on the enemy. Ephesians chapter six, verse number 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness. Where? In high place. Where are your blessings? They're in high place. They're in high place. In high, that's where they are. And the key of faith to get them from where they are in the realm of God. Remember, uh, uh, he's, he, uh, his, all of his riches in glory. We need to get them as it is in heaven here on the earth. Yeah, we need to get them on the earth. And the big struggle for too many people is trying to wrestle with what's going on in flesh and blood and miss out. On the opportunity to access, listen to this, to access what we already possess that's in heavenly places. So the enemy's goal is to keep us distracted. The enemy's effort is to keep us out of love and walking in flesh and trying to get people told and trying to make like if we cry enough, God will finally do something. Hmm? I'm, I'm endeavoring to ri help us rise up in the area of faith. OK, let's say again. Let me give you a perspective on the issue with the enemy. Ephesians chapter six, verse number 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rules of darkness in this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, let's move on to first Peter chapter one. Verse number three. <laughs> Blessed. Be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, according to his abundant mercy, hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, that, that puts a whole, God put a whole nother perspective on our wrestling with the enemy. For this purpose was the Son of God manifested that he might destroy the works of the evil one. When it, I will try to say this without screaming and running around. When God raised Jesus from the dead, he broke the back of the enemy's power yes, it is. Yes, it over is. the kingdom. Oh! Yes. And somehow, somehow, we need God to, to saturate our thinking process, to, to, to saturate our emotional situation, to saturate our heart, and, and, and to saturate our spiritual self with the reality and the excellent awareness that Jesus was raised from the dead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> and then he said that thing like, behold, I give you power over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. <laughs> okay, I got to finish. I got to finish. First Peter chapter three, ver, uh, chapter one, verse three. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy, not just a little bit of drifting mercy, you know, dew drops of mercy. No, no. Abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Verse number four, first Peter chapter one. Verse number four. How, how, what has he raised us? He's raised us to an inheritance incorruptible 
and undefiled that what fadeth not away, it, where is it? Reserved in heaven for you, for you, put these little extra words on, for us. And why don't you, why don't you kick, why don't you kick the devil and say, for me? Like Carrie used to say one time, she we little, 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 and we smell all this stinky in the room. We're like, what's the something stink? And we said, did somebody mess on themselves? She rolled over, throw her legs up. Me! <laughs> like, so so we, 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 when we see this inheritance reserved in heaven, we need to say, for me! <laughs> Come on, say it. For, for me! Yeah, it's our inheritance. And then, and then who, who do we, who do we, look in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 5. Who, who, oh, God, listen, God is, God is awesome. Isn't he just awesome? I mean, he has hooked this thing up till it is, it is actually fail safe. It is actually foolproof. It is actually uh, uh, uptight and all right. Hmm? Uh, chapter 1, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 5. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. I'm kept. I don't know about you. I'm kept. Kept. You know that, that song, Saved by His Power Divine, Saved to uh, Life Sublime, and Now I'm Free. Yeah. Uh, well, look at this verse a little slow here, and then we're going to wrap up. Look at this verse a little slow here. These are the people who he's made this reservation in heaven. And, and, and see, it's not you keeping you. Amen. We need to deal with this one more time. It's not you keeping you. It's not your education. It's not your good looks. It's not who you know. Listen, God, listen, who are kept by the power of God. Say out loud, God is keeping me. God is keeping me. Who are kept by the power of God through faith. That's why you don't want stuff messing with your faith. You don't, what, you don't want what you see mess with your faith. You don't want getting out of love mess with your faith. Faith works by love. We are kept by the power of God through faith. Unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. So therefore, we have to be strong in the anchor that we have in love to make sure that our faith keeps working. All right, here's the closing part. Teaching point. This is a teaching point. Here's the whole bottom line deal that we want to be sure to embrace today. God hath. <laughs> yeah. Past tense. God hath done the blessed part. <laughs> he, he's done all he need to do. <laughs> and we now must do the possessed part. Oh, I wish I had time for a quiz. Because I'd have some of you all stand up and tell me, well, then how do you possess it? What I would want you to say is, is I would possess it by staying in love. I would want you to say is that I'm living the love walk. I would want you to say, I will stay aware and not allow anything to dilute my or stop my love because I know that faith works by love. And therefore, I determine to stay in love. Hallelujah. Hmm? And that's how you possess. Now, here's, here, here's the last key I'm going to put out here. Here's the last key I'm going to put out here. To possess it, like I said earlier in the message, means that we have to see that God has it. In order to see that God has it, we have to keep looking in his word. Because that's where, the, uh, here's a big old word, that's where the delineation, that's where God helps us know what he has for us. And then in order for us to then be able to possess what he has for us, we have to see it because then when we see it, that we know he has it, then that, there, that, that puts in a position that we can make a demand and expect that he will have it show up 
in the midst of us. Now, here's this action point deal. Here we're going back to this basic stuff. Faith, the basics never get old. Here's a good action point. Just believe the word. <laughs> believe the word. A lot, of, a lot of people keep functioning in the sense realm. And I know you can't help that because that's, that's the way God made us. But he gave us a sixth sense. The faith sense. And it becomes important for us to press that issue to the extent that we get a, that we get a un uh, we get an unhindered attitude of boldness about the word of God. And don't measure it by how you're feeling. Measure it with your faith because faith does not walk by feeling. Faith does not walk by sight. Hmm? All right. Here's the next point in action point. Clear the way. Now, a little while ago, we talked about this, whatever's lurking around. And then sometimes you might need to get on your face and just say, okay, God, if there's anything in me about somebody that I have overlooked, <laughs> scrape that up too. <laughs> listen, they, listen, they're not worth it. It may have hurt, but that pain is not worth it. So clear the way, because it's kind of like unforgiveness sets up a filter of a sort that, that, that things can't get in <laughs> or things can't get out. It's just there in the way. So get the way cleared out so that when you do believe the word, there's not other stuff on the inside of you contradicting the word that you believe and cause it to become of no effect. No, clear the way. Forgive. I need you to say it one more time. Father, forgive them. Say it one more time. Father, forgive them. Why? Because they don't know what they did. All right. Then here the other item under, uh, under, under the action point. Do the word. I struggled again like I did last week in terms of saying this business, and I'm going to try real hard not to say it because if it makes you uncomfortable, good. But uh, <laughs> I need to say this thing again about doing the word in relationship to tithing, whatever, sowing, uh, uh, watering your seed, don't dig up your seed with your mouth, and expect God. Expect him to fix situations. So that you could do your tithe. Hmm? Fix situation. He'll come up with a program from the government that'll, that'll, that'll eradicate whatever debt you had that you said you had to pay this debt because you couldn't, therefore you couldn't tithe because you had to pay this debt. God'll, God'll wipe the debt out. Oh, God, somebody, somebody will say, oh, yes, he will. Come on, say, oh, yes, he will. Yeah, yeah. He, he'll wipe the debt out with the goal and with the purpose that you will do the tithe. Because he wants you to do the tithe so that you can be in the position that he can do what? Open the yeah. windows of heaven and pour out blessing on you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not just money. You remember I said the last week? Not ble blessing is more than just money. Right. Huh? He'll pour out blessing on you that you don't have room to receive. So quit trying to logically figure out whether you can do tithing or not. That'll just be a part of your nature part of your lifestyle. Okay, here we go. Here's this last, last item under action point. Speak the word. I don't know how many times in the conference last week we heard these great speaker people talking to us about you have to say what God said. And when you say what God said, you release the power that God makes available. I wrote down here, aside from what I put up there, no matter what you see. Um, and some things look really bad. <laughs> they really look bad. huh? But I'm telling you, get, get God's word deposited on the inside of you to the extent that, that it's kind of like the worse it looks, the more you say it. <laughs> and stand there and expect and believe it to just come to pass. Don't try to figure out how. I, I, I don't know how going, God is going to eradicate this tax debt that we have on us in the purchase of this bill. He eradicated the land contract portion. So surely, surely he can have a little tax deal. Huh? And the last tax receipt I got said someone there like pending 
uh, investigation or pending, consider or something. I said, oh yeah, it's working. <laughs> it's working, yeah. God gonna work this out. God has worked this, God has worked this out. Speak the word. Get more into doing that and less saying how you feel. Huh? And don't use that issue. I couldn't help myself. Yes, you can. <laughs> Determination point and I'm done. Fight the good fight. Of faith. That's what we have available to us. Your faith will move mountains. Your faith will make a way where there seems no way. Your faith is the evidence of things not seen. Hmm? So whether you see it, you got to fight. And there's going to be some fight. I mean, there's stuff. Uh, well, let's do uh, Well, OK, I started to say there's stuff. Oh, at your house now <laughs> that's going to try to pull this joy out of you by the time you get back home. Hmm? But uh, I, I want us to, uh, in, in just a moment, I'm going to ask you to stand up on your feet, but uh, when you stand up, I'm going to ask us to send faith home. Amen. Send your faith to cover the highway between now and the time you get to your house. So that you'll be able to sustain what you've heard today and press your way through those issues. The enemy heard what we said this morning. He heard and he's sitting there. He's sitting there just waiting for an opportunity to help you get out of love before you can get to your car. Faith works by. Faith works by. Faith works by love. Therefore, we need to stay in love. And I'm going to use this, this worldly expression at all costs. Yes. Hmm? Because your faith will make a way. So stand up on your feet. Let's take this moment. Just, just a little piece of time. And I need to call to stay on. Those who are on the call, I want you to stay on too. I want us to make a declaration. I want us to say what we believe that God has in store for us. As we say it, I, I would like to expect that what we say will go in our own ear and it will saturate our own thinking process. And I don't care what you were up against before you walked into this sanctuary. I declare to you in the name of Jesus that God has already handled it. And I wish you would shout and bless him right now, even before. He's already handled it. He's already handled it. There's some things scheduled for next week. And you're still pondering how they're going to come out. God has already made the way. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Say this out loud. Father, in the name of Jesus. I believe that your word is true. I determine to declare that my faith works by love. My determination today before all heaven and earth is that I choose to walk in love. And as I walk in love, my faith is released to manifest your blessing. In every condition, in every situation, in every circumstance, in my life. And I declare in the name of Jesus that joy comes like a river to make a way for me to bless you, to honor you, to adore you. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. 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 It is so. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. 
thank you now for those of you watching, those of you on the call. We appreciate you being in with us. Spread the word. Tell others you have access to this information 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And we believe in Jesus' name that the manifestation of the goodness of God will show up in your life because you follow his word and do what it tells you to do. Let's take this last moment to share with you the gospel. The gospel is found in the gospel according to John chapter 3, verse number 16. And we're going to have the words for it on the screen there. Here's the starting point. Here's the expression of God's great love. Would you please say this out loud together? Ready? Read. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting. And this gospel points us to salvation. Salvation is found in Romans chapter 10, verse number 9. Let's read that together out loud. Those words are there. Ready? Read. That if thou shalt confess with thine mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. In Jesus' name, say this prayer out loud. God in heaven, I thank you for today. I believe that your word is true. I have seen, heard, read, and said the gospel. I have seen, heard, read, and said salvation. I believe that your word is true. You loved me so much that you sent your son Jesus. He died on the cross for me. You raised him from the dead for me. So I declare Jesus is my savior. He's my master. And I make him the Lord of my life. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. I'm born again. I'm saved. Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. God bless you. Look us up on our website, stc.church. You can find out information on how to get in touch with us. Thank you for being in on us today, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us for the Salvation Temple broadcast. We'd like for you to join us for our weekly services, Sunday at 1045 a.m. and Thursdays at 645 p.m or join our services via conference call by dialing 530-881-1212 and entering the access code. We look forward to seeing you at Salvation Temple Church, where the focus is on you. Welcome to Salvation Temple Church, where